I decided to do edge retention testing, and the two steels that I decided to evaluate against one another was ZDP-189 and CPM-M4. This is a Spyderco Gale Bradley in CPM-M4. It's a Spyderco Endura-4 in ZDP-189. There's a few differences here in the, in, in the geometry of the blades, hollow ground to flat ground. Uh, both good knives, both good workers. Um, Spyderco Gale Bradley, the, the first model, is one of the, the toughest folding knives that I've ever seen or ever worked with. The lock on it is unbelievably sturdy. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very good knife in and of itself. Good ergonomics on it. Sputterco Endura 4, I've talked about that, this knife before, it's a, really a, a, a purpose driven workhorse, it really is, good ergonomics, good blade geometry, it's a model that I really, really like. So, I decided to do the edge retention testing between these two steels because of the high performance of both steels. And these are two steels that recently, in, in other models, that I've carried side by side and used side by side, just in general use just looking at how they feel and how they come along and I can't see a big performance difference between the two steels. They both are excellent performing steels. They're two of my favorite steels to carry. Um, fairly different compositions. ZDP-189 is a lot of carbon and a lot of chromium at a very high hardness. Uh, Mid-60s on the, on the Rockwell scale. M4 is up there too. Usually Rockwell in the, in the low 60s high carbon but low chromium so m4 isn't stainless it's not a big concern with m4 but still worth noting it's not stainless uh, and also high vanadium content and high tungsten content so both very good performing steels both steels that I, I very much prefer to carry in a folding knife and because of that because of that high performance of them I, I thought it would be a good test I thought that putting them side by side against one another would be interesting. So the, both knives were sharp in the same way. They were both at 30 inclusive. I used the stones from the Spyderco Sharp Maker. I started on coarse diamond. I worked my way through the, the coarse diamond rods. I moved on to medium. I worked my way through the medium rods and then fine and then ultra fine. When I moved on the shops for these, I followed a, a similar pattern to what I have in the past. I worked with a, a 3 to 5 micron compound on basswood. I worked my way through that and moved on to a 1 micron compound again on basswood. After that, I moved on to a quarter micron on leather and finished with a tenth of a micron on leather. Both knives were at a, a very high sharpness for the testing. The testing was on cardboard, was push cutting cardboard. The cardboard that I used wasn't overly heavy, it wasn't overly severe. I didn't want, I didn't want that to uh, play a role in the test. So quite a bit was cut. For the first run, I, I did two runs, um, marking off the blades with what parts I was going to use. Lower part for the first test, upper part for the second test. For the first test, and the, the, the only difference between the two tests was that, uh, because the same cardboard was used for each run, but in the first test I was checking the edges against arm hair, and in the second test I was checking the edges against leg hair, uh, simply because I, I ran out of arm hair to check against. I've been doing other testing recently, and so it moved to the leg. Leg hair is thicker, and it, it gives a bit of a different result. So, for the first test, M4 cut 1,050 inches of cardboard before it stopped shaving hair. ZDP-189 cut 1,086 inches of cardboard before it stopped shaving hair. It's a lot of cardboard. It's a lot of cutting. Um, ZDP-189 had a slight advantage. Now, you're talking about a, a 3 to 4% difference in performance. Not very much. Very, very close. For the second test, M4 cut 870 inches of cardboard before it stopped shaving hair, and ZDP-189 cut 900 inches of cardboard before it stopped shaving hair. Again, 
a three to four percent difference. Very, very close numbers. Almost, almost strange how close they were. And I don't, I don't run the numbers until I'm done. I mean, I don't figure out the percentages of the first test when it's done. I wait until the whole thing is done. Uh, I'm not good enough at math to figure it out in my head while I'm going. I don't think that the numbers being exactly the same is an indicator that it's a perfect test and that that it would always come out that way. I think it was I think it was a little bit of dumb luck that the numbers came out percentage-wise as close as they did. I'm sure if I did more runs I would get some variation. Um but I'm not I'm not unhappy with the result. It's not it's not far off from what I've seen in use. Um I think that what's safe to say, given the, the results of the test, and th this too correlates with what I've seen in use, is that these two steels with that kind of cutting, that kind of edge geometry, perform very, very, they have a very, very close performance to one another. Uh, could, the, could the results, could, could the performance be thrown off by uh, what you're cutting, how you're cutting it? Yeah, of course course those those variables always come into it um if, if you're not aware of that kind of thing and you're trying to evaluate a steel you need to be aware of it what you're cutting how you're cutting it how the knife was sharpened what kind of finish all that stuff makes a can make a big difference and like i said it, it, there's there's some differences between these two knives i mean a little bit of difference in geometry hollow ground as opposed to flat ground but these are as close as i could get the uh the two steels as far as what I had available so three to four percent difference that's fine like I said I think what's fair to say is that the two steels are, are very very close to one another in performance um, and that's again that's the result for this test the way I conducted this test if you start changing things up could you get a different result yeah but both steels are great performers they're both great both great steels for for carrying and folding knives. So good test, interesting result. Not, I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out given the, given the composition of the two steels. I wasn't, you know, I had no idea how it was going to go. But it went good and and a little strange that it was so close. But ZDP one eighty nine had a slight advantage.